I'm Edie Lush and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos at the World Economic Forum. Really pleased now to be joined by Justine Cassell, Associate Vice Provost for Technology, Strategy and Impact at Carnegie Mellon. Tell me about online learning. Well, there's this understanding now that jobs may disappear with the advent of new technology. And that is undoubtedly true. With every industrial revolution, there's been a shift in the job balance. And with this industrial revolution, with cyber physical systems, we know that jobs are going to go away. At the same time, interestingly, those same technologies, artificial intelligence technologies, are being used to develop new ways of teaching distance learning. Mm -hmm. um, there, it's, it's an exciting prospect and the prospect is that anybody anywhere, of course anybody anywhere who has access to high-speed broadband could have access to education. But what's I, the problem? Well I have a little bit of a worry about that distance education the way it's construed now. Mm -hmm. Not everybody but a lot of the companies that are jumping in seem to be allying the newest technology, that is methods for videotaping and audio taping and distributing around the world, to the oldest forms of pedagogy. Mm -hmm. That is what we might call sage on the stage. <laughs> Child is a funnel. Right. Professor is a, a source of knowledge. Professor pours knowledge into student. And that's just not what education is. Mm -hmm. Education is a struggle between a student and new knowledge. Mm -hmm. And only if there is a struggle does learning happen. And by struggle, I mean you have to not understand and to realize that you don't understand to acquire new knowledge. And it's also interesting because it's easy to get disenchanted if you don't understand, right? And then how do you, and then you might stop the course, might fall out. And we know, of course, that MOOCs as currently configured, fewer than 5% of those who enroll actually finish the course. Mm -hmm. Those are not great statistics. Even worse, or at least just as bad, is the fact that those 5% tend to be people with an advanced degree. Mm -hmm. So MOOCs are not doing what they are capable of doing today. And, and to my mind, part of the issue is that they lack that intangible but extremely important social infrastructure for learning. That is the relationship between teacher and student and the relationship between students working together on acquiring new knowledge. So how do you, how do you get that? Well, in my own research, I've been developing technologies that create rapport, interpersonal rapport, with a student and use that rapport to motivate the student but also to open the student up to new knowledge. So we know, for example, that two students who work together, if they're friends, they learn better than if they're strangers. Hmm. And, and that seems to be because they are more willing to accept challenges, mm -hmm. they're more willing to accept confrontation if they're working with somebody they trust. So the technologies we're building, likewise, create this um, rapport infrastructure as they teach the student. Justine, thank you so much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion here in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush.